Hey guys, Omar here. Welcome to part three, Direction of Light in our series of Understanding Light in Photography. If you missed part one, we talked about the intensity of light, how much light hits your subject. In part two, we talked about how color of light can affect your photographs. And now in this one, we're talking about the direction of light. So that one seems pretty obvious, right? which way the light is coming from. But I know if I go through my old photographs, when you're a beginner photographer, a lot of times you don't even know or think about where the light is coming from. As a new photographer, you are starting to see composition and elements in your photograph before you start to notice the nuances of light. All right, first of all, we should discuss why the direction of light is important to begin with. And the answer is that, is that it creates shadows and creating shadows is important in your photography so that you can sort of add a little dimension to your photographs and changing the direction of light will either create more shadows or less shadows depending on what you're going for. All right, so creating depth and three dimension in your photographs is important. Something else that's important with direction of light is it creates a mood. Your photographs actually can have a variety of moods depending on the direction of light. But if you shoot street and landscape, pretty much the general rule is to get up early or stay for sundown. Getting beautiful soft light with, which creates long shadows gives your picture more dimension and more interest as opposed to going out when the sun is overhead. So as far as street and landscape goes, think about time of day more than portraits where you can move people around. Okay, and then the other thing to think about when you're thinking direction of light on a person's face is what do you wanna accomplish? What's your goal? How much shadow do you want? Now, for one thing, you should know your subject, okay? So personally, I shoot mostly teens and you know people my age, moms, dads, and so I don't need to go for super moody, cool, hip lighting that's coming from all over the place. So for me, my main choice is flat lighting. That's what I'm using right now is flat lighting. It's the most flattering if you wanna fill in all the shadows in wrinkles and pimples. Now the dangerous flat lighting, straight lighting that's happening right now could be considered boring. But if your picture is filled with emotion and mood and people look great and the sparkle in the eye looks wonderful, then I say that flat lighting is fine if the subject and what's happening in the picture is working for you. By the way, for headshots, this works too. Uh, headshots for actors and headshots for business, people wanna see the person's face, okay? However, changing the direction of light, moving it off axis starts to make things a little bit more interesting and give the face some depth. Okay, let's start with putting light completely overhead. Now putting light completely overhead is fine, but you'll usually need some kind of fill or something because our brows will hide our eyes. So you have to be careful with light that's overhead. One way to combat that is you can grab a, a reflector like this and have the light that's coming overhead bounce back in the face and you can move this reflector for how much you know bounce you want back in the per person's eyes. The other thing is you can move that light instead of being overhead, you can move it forward a bit. So by moving that light forward, we get what's called butterfly lighting. And this is where you start getting into a little bit more dimension. You go from flat lighting to putting that light kind of in front and butterfly lighting is when you start to see a little shadow form under the nose. And it, it not only the nose, but really under this, you see right near me, I'm all lit up here, everything. But if you have a shadow under the chin, it gives the person nice form, okay? So butterfly lighting is a great way to sculpt a person's face. Now moving from straight on to starting to move from the side, you get a little shadow on the nose over here and that's called loop lighting. And loop lighting is great if you just wanna start chiseling one side of the face and getting that little painterly 3D effect. Loop lighting. Now if you use, we'll talk more about this when we talk about quality of light, but if you use a harsh light source, you're gonna get a very hard shadow. But if you loop light with a soft light, you get nice dimension without anyone seeing really a shadow of the nose, which is cool. All right, moving that light even more and getting even more dramatic, you get what's called Rembrandt lighting. And this one gives you a nice little triangle under the eye here. And the triangle um, and that shadow gives a lot more dramatic 3D dimensionality, okay? So Rembrandt lighting is used often 
in Rembrandt paintings. And then if you go super extreme, you could put the light on the side and you get split lighting or side lighting. And this is if you're going for really dramatic effect. It's not used too often, but you can completely put one light in one side of the face in shadow and the other one in light. And then of course, if you go back all the way, you have just full back backlight. However, you always wanna have a second light if you're using full backlight, you wanna reflect the light back, okay? What else do I got here? Hmm. Now, when you start playing around with light, it's a complete game of inches. One of the mistakes I used to make as a beginner was my light was always straight on and not, it, the height of it was always wrong. And you can tell by the catch lights. If you shoot light or put someone near a window and the catch lights are too, you know, centered on the eyeballs, then that light is too low, okay? You have to worry about height of the light. And the general rule is that the light is usually about 45 degrees from the person coming kind of down, and you just wanna create a little shadow under the chin, okay? And uh, if you, of course, go way low, the direction of light coming up, usually no one puts a flash under there, but if some reason you're gonna take a picture and there's a lot of light coming from below, you're gonna get kind of Halloween lighting, I call it, and it's pretty ugly lighting. You wanna completely stay away from Halloween lighting unless you're doing a portrait during Halloween, or you want someone to look completely evil. <laughs> but if you look at some of your photographs, check the eyes and check the face. Start to see the direction of light coming from your photographs. Okay, so one way you can determine which direction the light is coming in if you're on the field is, believe it or not, just use your hands. Even on a cloudy day, you can just, here, I'm gonna record my hand here, <laughs> and I do this on portrait sessions all the time, is just to turn. You see, I'm getting backlight on my hands there. And if you turn, you can see where the light is coming from. So see right here, I have dead eyes. I have dead eyes right now. If you just kind of work around and spin and start to look at shadows, you can kind of figure out what you want. Start looking at photographs and try to determine where the light is coming from, especially photographs that you like. All right, I hope that was helpful. I'll see you guys next time for part four, which is quality, quality of light. All right, I'll see you next time.